Welcome back to the How to Finesse podcast. I am your host, the Jackal, a.k.a. the Finesse Father. This is episode nine, how I bossed up on Rick Ross. My publicist was doing a great job. She was getting me into a bunch of exclusive red carpet events. I was going to movie premieres, launches, restaurant openings, listening parties, a bunch of stuff. Whatever was going on in Atlanta, I was invited there. So I started meeting more clients. I mean, I was at the right space at the right time with the right people. This investment in my publicity was starting to pay off. I was starting to meet some big names and got to schmooze with them and got to get to know them a little bit more. So after attending a couple of events and seeing what the PR life was like, I decided, hey, why can't I do this for myself? I mean, I have some clients right now that are paying me for management and consulting. I think I can start offering them some red carpet services and get their name out there too. One event I was at, I actually met a TV and radio personality by the name of Headcrack. You guys may know him from the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, Dish Nation. He's on TV and the radio five days a week. Nationally syndicated in over 60 markets. Met him at an event, ended up exchanging information, and kept in touch. So get this, I actually ended up doing publicity for Headcrack. I mean, one of the biggest radio and TV personalities out there. And this was just such a big deal to me. So now I had E.T. on Hot 107.9 with the Dirty Boys, and then I had Headcrack also on Hot 107.9, but on a bigger radio station, 60 different cities, and also on TV. And this was great for my company. My name was getting bigger, my name was getting out there, and I felt like I was growing. I ended up doing some publicity for him, some brand redevelopment, helping him out with some websites. So now I was in the business of selling publicity. I learned from my publicist what to do, and I figured I could start doing this myself. So several clients of mine actually were asking me, man, how are you getting to all these events? What are you doing? How is that happening? Can you hook me up? And I was like, yeah, absolutely, let's do it. You need to get some PR. Now I knew I couldn't do it on my own, so I wasn't selfish or greedy. So here's another finesse factor. Finesse factor. Partner up. If you have skills that are valuable and someone else has skills that are valuable, together you guys can be a powerhouse and take over. So I'm attending all these exclusive events. One of my favorite events, actually, I'm going to share a story with you all, was when I got invited to uh, Rick Ross's Rich Hair Care product launch party. So my publicist, of course, got me on the exclusive list and come to find out it was going to be held at his private mansion in Atlanta. I mean, this house is the biggest house in the state of Georgia. It was formerly owned by Evander Holyfield. It's got the largest swim pool in America. How did it feel pulling up to this event? In a few words, I'm going to say decadence, opulence, luxury, wealth, abundance. I kept saying in my head. So we're pulling up to Rick Ross's house now, right? This is like a dream come true. I've never imagined this would happen to me before ever. The first thing I see is the big black metal gates. Maybach music. In the middle of the metal gates, you see the double R emblem for Rick Ross. Those gates open up. The first thing you see is a long, windy road, and it's going uphill all the way up. It's long, and it's going up to the mansion. So you pull up to the mansion, you see palm trees, you see um, fountains with water spraying everywhere. There's uh, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, uh, Mercedes, Bentleys, whatever luxury car you can imagine was lined up on the side. There must have been like eight of them. Once I got inside, there was like this big double staircase. I mean, it was just amazing. We went into the main room, we had some cocktails. Of course, they were serving nothing else but Bel Air champagne, some of the best. I was enjoying some rosé, some of the deluxe gold version. I mean, there were some hors d'oeuvres going on, beautiful people, a bunch of bloggers, radio stations, media outlets. Um, and there was a beautiful room that had just candles all over the table and I was just enjoying myself. There was a fireplace, everybody in there just looked elegant. I think he even gave everybody their own free bottle of Bel Air. I think I had like three of them. <laughs> Um, but I actually got to meet Rick Ross. I took a picture with him and celebrated with him. This was a great time. I felt rich forever. I felt like a dream came true. Rick Ross is one of my favorite artists. I love his music. I love him. more than his music. I just love his outlook on life and how he lives so big and luxuriously. And that's definitely an inspiration for me. So the fact that I got to enjoy that and celebrate with him in his own house was just like a check on the list. So here's another finesse factor. Finesse factor. You never know who you're talking to. At the party, I was having a great time. I ended up striking up a conversation with some random rapper. He happened to be on Rick Ross's label. His name was Skrilla, and he was one of the Maybach, Maybach music, music artists with Wale and Meek Mill. But he asked what I did, and I told my man his radio personalities. He was like, oh, cool, let's exchange information. I gave him my phone number. He hit me up, and that was it. So one day, I'm riding down the street. I get a call on my phone, and, and I look on the screen, and what does it say? It says Skrilla Maybach music, and I'm like, oh, snap. I gave him my number, but I didn't think he was actually going to call because, you know, Hollywood people, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll have lunch, we'll do this, and they never call. He's like, hey, what's up? Hey, uh, you know Rick Ross opening up a new wing stop. You should pull up on us. Come through and see what it's looking like. I was like, at first I was making sure he knew he had the right number, but I was like, okay, cool, cool. Send me the address. <laughs> 
So in my head, I'm like, oh, snap. I just got invited by one of Rick Ross's personal artists to his new business opening. This is dope. I felt like I was in the inner circle. I felt like I was cool. I was accepted. Here's another finesse factor. Finesse factor. You got to walk the walk and talk the talk. So when I get to Rick Ross's new wing stop, there's a bunch of people out there. I mean, there's media out there. There's fans out there. There's people actually trying to order food. And there's just a huge line. You can't even get in the door. He's letting people in like 10 at a time and then 10 come out and then 10 go in. So I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to text Skrilla and be like, you know, can you come out here and get me? Because he's probably obviously going to be busy. So I look to see who the security guard was. I look at the security guard and I pretty much just cut in front of everybody in line. Remember, we don't wait in lines. And I go up to the security guard and I say, hey, I'm personally invited here by Skrilla. I'm here to see Ross. Can you let me in? And then he's like, man, come on. And literally lets me in in front of everybody and I walk in. So I get through the crowd, I see Skrilla. I'm like, hey, what's up Skrilla, man? I appreciate you inviting me. Um, this place is dope. I'm about to order me a 10 piece. <laughs> And he's like, okay, cool, cool. I'm going to uh, introduce you to Ross real quick. And I'm like, oh, snap. He's about to introduce me to Rick Ross. Damn. I'm, I, uh, oh, okay, okay. So Skrilla was on it. He was really nice to me. He was accommodating. He was a great host, too. He knew how to play the game. So he knew I was valuable, and I could offer him something, maybe like a radio interview. So he treated me like a VIP. He was like, yo, you want a picture with Ross? And I was like, absolutely. So then when everyone else is scrounging around Rick Ross to try to get a photo, he just taps Ross on the side. And you know uh, him from the radio station, right? And Ross was like, all right, cool. And literally posed with me and bam, there's my picture with Rick Ross at Wingstop. I literally was blown out of my mind. This was amazing. I didn't have to beg for the picture. I got the picture given to me. This was finesse level 10,000. I thanked Skrilla. I uh, got my wings, took my lemon pepper, enjoyed them that night and had a great night. So after a few months of doing publicity with Headcrack, I started getting him some paid bookings, which is really what it's about. Uh, a lot of people in this industry could say, hey, I could do this for you, I could do that for you. But in my case, I was getting him like $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 bookings back to back to back. So he saw my value, and at that point, I felt it was right for me to say, hey, you know, we've been working together for a while. I think we like each other's styles. I should think I should just go ahead and manage you. And he agreed to it, and it, it was official. I took him out to lunch. We ended up having a nice meal. I popped a gold bottle of Ace of Spades champagne at the table and just boom, made it a big deal, signed the contract, and I had a new big client under my wing. My company was now growing larger. I had more official names associated with me, and I was just feeling on top of the world. So as I'm doing publicity, I told you I had partnered up with my publicist, and uh, we were going to work on my first client together. I brought her one of my clients that had already been paying me for months, so I knew she was good, and I was basically giving her like free money to do what she was doing for me. So the first client we had was a female rapper of mine. She wanted to get her name out there. She wanted to build her brand. I told her what better way to do that than to get on some red carpet, get in some of these exclusive events with these movers and shakers and make it happen. I basically sold the PR to her because she needed it. So we did a three-way phone call with my publicist and my client, had them introduce themselves to each other, said how they could help each other out, and then we agreed upon a rate. She was excited to get started. We were going to do a three-month contract. I was excited. This was my first PR client that I had with my new partner. So I was excited to see how this was gonna work out and see how much more money we could make together. So my publicist and I agreed that any clients we had together, it'd be a 50-50 split, which was fair. So our first event for my new client was gonna be Rick Ross's birthday party. That was the event in Atlanta in January. You had to be there. If you weren't, you weren't nobody. So my publicist was having a little bit of a hard time getting myself and my client's name on the list. She was telling me, oh, we're not confirmed yet. It was getting closer and closer to the date. I'd already promised my client that I would be able to get her in. So I was just looking real shaky right now. I felt like ugh, stressed. I didn't know what to do. Like, like two days before the Rick Ross birthday party, I get a call from my client saying, hey, um, I can't really afford both of y'all. So I'm just going to go ahead and work with her. And I appreciate everything, but I'm going to hit you up if I need you later. And in my head, I'm like, uh, that's not how it goes. Her and I are partners, so we work together. So I don't know what's going on, but let me go ahead and figure this out. So I called my publicist. And I'm like, hey, my client just called saying, like, she doesn't want to work with both of us, that she just wants to work with you. And she's like, yeah, she told me that she just wants to work with me. So I told her that'd be cool. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. How is this cool? How is this okay for you to steal a client of mine? behind my back. I mean, I couldn't believe this was happening. I was furious. I was flabbergasted. I felt like I was being, I felt like my client was being disloyal to me and my publicist was being disloyal to me. It's like both of them was just attacking me when all I was trying to do was provide good for both of them. I was hurt. 
Come to find out, my client had already paid my publicist. My publicist told her half the amount, you could just use me and we'll keep it pushing. I felt furious, I felt played, I felt betrayed, I felt taken advantage of, I felt double crossed. Here's another finesse factor. Finesse factor. Loyalty is key. After this, that publicist and that client blackballed. Anything I was doing or anything I was invited to or any of my clients asked about them, I would say don't work with them. They're shady, they're grimy, they steal money. And at the, was it worth the money that she had for me? I don't think so. So I was determined to not let it affect me. I was gonna push forward regardless. My goal was still to get into that Rick Ross party. I didn't have a publicist anymore, but I had connections. So how did I get in? I reached out to Skrilla, Rick Ross's artist, personally, and said, hey, can you add me plus one to the list for Ross's birthday party? I'd love to come. I was brave and bold. I had nothing to lose. He already invited me to Wingstop, so I felt, hey, why not go to the birthday party? Boom. He was like, what's your first and last name? And what's the first and last name of your guest? Done. So now I was above the media list, which my publicist would have got me on, and now I was on the personal VIP guest list of MMMG. So mission accomplished. I have made it into Rick Ross's house without a publicist. I did my own thing. I got the email saying it was going to be a masquerade theme party and everybody had to dress. The dress code was strictly mandatory. So I went out, I bought my mask, I bought me a fresh suit. His birthday party was going to be at his house again. This time it was going to be even more exclusive. Only the top notch, only the VIP of the VIP, all the biggest artists, all the biggest media personalities, radio personalities in Atlanta were going to be there. So here's another finesse factor. Finesse factor. Always come bearing gifts. I went out and I said, hey, what would Rick Ross like? I know I couldn't afford to get him a Maybach or like a diamond chain for his birthday, but I could figure out something personal that he maybe could use. And I always see him smoking cigars like a boss, and I figured, hey, you know what, let me get him an ashtray. So I got him, went out shopping, I went out and found a nice crystal ashtray that was affordable, and a nice card, and I got it nicely wrapped, and then I brought it to the party with me. So I came bearing gifts. Almost nobody else at the party brought him gifts, so I immediately stood out. Everyone else just came looking for free stuff. So when I walked in this time, it was a way bigger event than the last time I was at his house. Just to get into his house, the valet line was like around the block. It was like around the street. Ubers were honking their horn, like, what is going on? It was packed. I mean, I couldn't even really see the house because there were so many people everywhere. I mean, there were beautiful women dressed nicely with the masks on, celebs everywhere, champagne flowing, food flowing, pictures taken, paparazzi popping. There were celebrities everywhere. I mean, who did I see there? I saw Rick Ross, of course. I saw Meek Mill. I saw Dej Loaf. I saw Usher. I saw uh, Young Dolph. I saw a bunch of other people were there. And of course, Skrilla was there. He was shouting me out from the DJ booth at Rick Ross's party. This was beyond insane. And when you go outside to get some food, it's right before you leave, and there's a Wingstop truck to go. So you can make an order to go of whatever wings you want, however many you wanted. There was no limit to go. This was how you do a party. Rick Ross inspired me and let me know that I could attain greatness. This sparked that greatness, genius, luxury aspect of my life that I always wanted. If he could do it, I could do it. And I appreciate that, Ross. Thank you for that. Next week, you're going to find out how that party inspired me to do bigger and better, greater things. I actually ended up opening my own photo studio in L.A. and in Atlanta. Next week, you're going to find out all those secrets and more. Thank you for tuning in.